Welcome back to the course here at DreamHack Masters Malmu 2019. It is a great day for some Counter-Strike, and we're going to give it to you. Three best threes coming your way right here outside of the arena. We can see Mouseport setting up. We can see Optic setting up. We can see G2 just thinking about it in the hotel room. And boy, are we ready to get these matches underway. My name being Trace Dennis Saranthus. Welcome back, everybody. It was a long night last night, but we got there in the end of the day. We had to send two teams home in Tai Lu and Envious, but now we get to send some more teams home, which is somehow, some way, in a statistic sort of way, my favorite part of this whole thing. But without any further ado, let me go ahead and introduce my esteemed colleagues here with the gift of the gab. We do have that of Chad Burchill. We do have that of Christine Chi. You might recognize them as Sponge. You might recognize her as Potter. Guys, good morning. That's the first good time morning. I saw myself today. I wasn't sure how many buttons, and now we know. So what's the official? I, I thought that this was okay, but it's, it's not. This is much better. That's too much. Christine, I'm happy thoughts? With this. It does look good. Yeah. Good job, Chad. Thanks. Not I dressed bad. myself today, everybody. Hey. 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 All right. Bad. Well, I mean, we can't be having all the fun by ourselves. We have to have other people around here that are having fun, too. So we're going to include Frankie in the conversation and see what she's up to down there on the show floor. Well, to be honest, Dana, unlike you, I don't like seeing teams go home. So I'm kind of not having fun right now. I'm a bit scared for both these teams, Mouse Sports and the Evil Geniuses, because they are two teams who came into Malmo with the weight of expectation on their shoulders and a bit of tightness on the part of our New York champions on my left, Evil Geniuses, as well. So the pressure is on. The mood is calm. We've had some loud music banging and making its way through the land this morning because Evil Geniuses have been trying to get themselves hyped. The question is, can they take that hype into this matchup when they don't have an American audience cheering for them? We will soon find out, won't we, Stunner? You're damn right we will. And more importantly, I can tell you right now that they were just in there listening to Travis Scott. They had uh, goosebumps. Uh, I think even butterfly effect, it could be wrong, and but I heard it all. You, the two of you plus Jason are cheering, so that's an American audience, I suppose. Basically, what you've got to go on around here, so yeah, you're not entirely wrong. But I do <laughs> want to make sure we thank all the people that make this very much a reality. In Corsair, Monster Energy, eSport-Management.com, CS.Money, GG.Bet, and of course, everyone at home that is watching. That means you who have woken up early here in the EU time zone to watch, or you've stayed up late at home in NA, and you said, you know what, maybe there's a chance that EG just powers through this tough time that they started with here in Malmu. Well, it's definitely a chance. There is always a chance. And people are really liking the full stops in their names these days, aren't they? You know, you've got the uh, gg.bet, cs.money. They're yeah. enjoying the full stops. Yeah, the full stops. Why don't we just stop there and just take a yeah, look probably at a good idea. Group A and see what's going on with that. <laughs> Taking a look at the brackets, this is how it's all unfolded so that you haven't missed a single bit of the action. Christine, walk me through it. Yeah, I mean, yesterday we had some crazy upsets, I think. I mean, starting off with that EG versus um, Greyhound on that nuke. I mean, Greyhound, I had to actually go back and rewatch that match because I wanted to see if it was more so EG losing or Greyhound winning. And I got to say, it was a bit of 50-50. I mean, these Greyhound guys really showed up yesterday, surprising a lot of us. And of course, Liquid coming up. It was all three NA teams yesterday showing up and losing in their opening matches. What about right there when we start to look at the beginnings of G2's run in this event? So they get a 16-14, yeah. a little bit of bump in the road right in the beginning, and then the real bumps start. But can we really put that much expectations given the roster Well, situation. look, if you missed it yesterday, if you've been sleeping under a rock, or maybe you just haven't been watching much Counter-Strike at the moment, G2, they're not all French anymore. They changed things <laughs> up. They mixed it True. up. They decided that they were going to come into this event with yet another roster, a new one. They have Nexa and Hunter on board, and we can see the boy Nexa behind us. He's taken over the in-game leadership duties, and the reason that we're highlighting this game right here is because they exceeded expectations. The fact that they won a game, the fact that they took Astralis and they pushed them on a map like Nuke, that's the potential for the future. And the reason we're saying this, the reason that I have a little bit of hope in my voice for once, as opposed to the normal crushing defeat for <laughs> okay. everything, is that this was their first outing. You said it well yesterday, Trace. This is day zero for this team. Yep. They've come in here with zero practice. Nexa had a fantastic interview with us after they had lost, and they were saying that what they went over was names of spots. Jax doesn't even speak English proficiently at this point. So for them to come in here and even put up a little bit of a fight is what we took out of yesterday for G2. And promising down the future is where we could see this team come together with uh, with Nexa and Hunter, maybe leading the way from the Serbian style they had in Crazy. And long term, Christine, what do you think about this G2 lineup? I mean, it's obviously an uphill battle right now, but going forward, do you think they have what it takes? 
I definitely do. And I think I got to say, my expectations were pretty high for them coming into this. I mean, just thinking back, of course, English is not their first language, but Almanac, thinking back, at, he had a tenure in NA uh, with Misfits, with Sean yep. Gares there for a little bit. And next and Hunter coming from that crazy lineup, it was an international lineup. And these two did speak English uh, with that team. So coming into this, I really thought it, uh, and I think it is going to be the three Fringes and the two uh, uh, Serbians coming in strong and that puggy mix. And I don't know, G2, Kenny, Yes, is, is, is rising to the bar as well, and, and it, it's, everything is kind of meshing well for them right now. Well, the bar has been set, but at least over on Group B. We're going to start to shift our focus over to that side so that we can show you this bracket. Chad, this is your opportunity to tell the story. B for virtual, they like to say. But anyway, that opening one there, Liquid losing to Optic. They got uh, absolutely beat down in the first half of overpass 14 to 1, really struggling there on their T sides. Good look of the new Na'Vi, but uh, NIP was the interesting one to me, Trace. I didn't think that we'd see a Swedish team in the arena and now the stage is set for them to be the Aussies and get there pretty easily. Which must be a, a sort of tough one to say out loud for you, but it's true. I mean, they are poised to play against Greyhound, one of which we wouldn't have put a lot of stock in anyway. Yeah. Somehow Greyhound find themselves there, and now NIP find it just a little bit easier on their path. It, they do, but like, like I said, I went back and I rewatched that match in Greyhound, and I don't think it's going to be as easy as we might think. Although Nip and Plopsky, they did look very good yesterday, Greyhound also looked good. And I got to say, Dexter is impressing. He was top of the leaderboard. He is the in-game leader. Yep. And even thinking back at that major, I mean, he was getting a lot of opening kills for this Greyhound squad. And so I don't think it's actually going to be quite as easy as, uh, as, as we might think. Yeah, if we tie this in with what we saw from NIP versus Mouse Sports yesterday, sure, NIP looked better than what... I definitely expected. I think having Pitter as the coach being able to talk in all the freeze times helps. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that was quite poor was how Mouse Sports applied themselves, right? Mm. Sure, Rops was playing good. Sure, Carrigan was finding impact. But the rest of the individuals weren't really getting a lot done. I think they felt like they let themselves down yesterday because it wasn't the type of Counter-Strike we've come to expect from this Mouse Sports roster. And, you know, NIP, they kept it simple. They kept it simple like they always do. They just played default Counter-Strike, traded off each other quite well, and bullied their way into bomb sites. So props to them for that victory. Speaking of bullies, there's two bullies around here, and that would be Sweet. Sweden and Denmark, who like to beat up on each other from time to time, which leads me into our tug of war. We told you about this yesterday. And if you look behind us on the LED, you can see the teams that are going to be representing each country. Now, you guys want a fun little factoid? Sure. Malmu used to be a part of Denmark. Oh, okay. So they're all oh. like, try yeah, okay. It's all, it's all yeah. gone wrong. But anyway, look. Shouldn't they be friends then? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you would think so. I mean, they got that bridge right there in the middle, and it didn't seem like they really cared when we drove through it. So. If they had to have an actual tug of war, I know that it's a little bit of a disparity right now because it's two teams versus three teams. Yeah. Let's say we took Optic out of the mix because Config's pretty big. Who would win? Oof. Are we talking just physical? Oh, physical. physical yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not Counter-Strike. Uh. Let's, let's get out of that nonsense for a second. I feel like uh, Astralis would probably have Astralis the, the right North. fitness They're like gym to junkies. them. Yeah, the North guys as well. Yeah, Sweden is screwed. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what I would have to say as well. We're going to go ahead and step off to the side one more time. where We do have Frankie down on the sidelines with EG. I think we're blessed to hear about their music choices. We are, actually. Yeah, Chet, what were you listening to this morning? Uh, just some Travis Scott. <laughs> some basic music. Does Travis get you in a winning mood? Uh, yeah, I can say it's like a team anthem, his like music for our team. It's just like good music, gets us pumped. Yeah, it's pretty like motivational. I hear Sun as a fan, actually, as well. We've listened to a bit of Travis Scott in the green room. But I want to ask you how you felt coming into Malmo because, you know, optimism, surely you've just won in New York? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of rough coming the next day, but I think we should have won versus Greyhound anyways just because we had a sick tee half versus them. It could have been even better, but our communication and everything was just super sloppy the other day. So hopefully with more rest, we're going to be more prepared in how we usually are. So we'll see. What did you learn from that CT side against Greyhound? Um, honestly, we just learned that our rotations were super bad and I just think our communication was just super off and it led us getting flanked a lot from heaven and stuff. So just can't let it happen again. And going into this matchup against Mouse, obviously you're still tired, you're still feeling things and obviously the disappointment of yesterday. So how are you going to make sure you conquer them in this best of three? Um, honestly, the day before we just told people to sleep as much as they can, even though it was pretty rough. And we're just going to try to stay positive, stay confident and yeah, just try, gonna hit her shots and hopefully it helps. Sing some Travis Scott in your head. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> now you picked up a point on the Intel Grand Slam and there is another one at stake here in Malmo, but you don't have the American audience cheering you on and you're in a tough group with a lot of very good teams in that lower bracket to fight against. So how do you think your, fight, your chances are going of going to the arena? 
Um, I think it's going to be pretty tough. Obviously, if we make it all the way through, then we're going to play Liquid if all the favorites win. So it's just going to be a super tough road, but it's going to play everything a series at a time and just, you know, not get ahead of ourselves and yeah, to stay positive. All right, Trap Queen, I'll let you go do the veto and we're going to head back to our Trap Queen of the desk. Trap Queen, wow. What's a trap been, queen? You know, I don't know. It sounds like a trap card, maybe. Is I this like young people words again? It sounds like it. Honestly, Travis Scott is pretty good, though. Okay. I did just read uh, the news this morning. I, I feel like it was kind of heartbreaking to see that uh, Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott are going to be going their oh separate my ways. Gosh. But now Get us out of here. Got, yeah. <laughs> got it all out there, and now you all understand why I'm a little bit somber today. No, nonetheless, uh, he nailed a few good points there, right? They have to battle back upwards, and that's going to be the big sign here for EG if they really can prove the test of time. They win in New York, they come here, they face adversity. Can they struggle and rise above? What's the saying? Consistency is key. Something sure. like that? Yeah. yeah, so it's going to be important for them. You know there was an interview coming out from their camp yesterday saying they need to continue to get into playoffs to evolve, Trace. Talking about evolving, that's what we're doing ever so much around here, and especially now that the ESL Pro Tour is in town. One thing that we're going to begin to talk about is that. But first, I have something that I want to show you all right now, right here. The ESL Pro Tour. The ESL Pro Tour is the manifestation of ESL and DreamHack's vision for esports. Connecting nearly 20 CSGO events into one circuit and one story. At the foundation of it are challenger level tournaments. Aspiring teams enter here to win their first professional trophies and rise to the master's level. Local tournaments will qualify you for international challenger events. Winning one of those will get you into a corresponding master's event. To play in a master's tournament, you can also win an online qualifier or be invited on a high ESL world ranking. It is on this level teams travel the world and compete for the Intel Grand Slam and the highest honors at two Masters Championships each year. All of this will be tied together by the ESL Pro Tour ranking with tournaments categorized based on their size and prize purse. A Masters Championship will have the largest amount of prize money and a field of 16 teams. Teams 1 to 8 of the ESL Pro Tour ranking from the previous 12 months, well, they will qualify directly. The other 8 will come from a LAN qualifier with teams 9 to 16 in the ESL Pro Tour ranking and 8 wildcard teams from around the world. Recent results, well, they will matter the most. Tournaments will provide their full ranking points value for teams qualifying for the nearest Masters Championship and half of their points value for the subsequent Masters Championship. The road to the first Masters Championship starts this autumn. DreamHack Masters Malmo, IEM Beijing and the ESL Pro League Finals will send their winners to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice and provide points to teams on the road to ESL One Cologne. Starting with the Cathedral of Counter-Strike, all Masters Championships will boast a million dollar prize purse. The goal of the ESL Pro Tour, well it's simple, to give each team a clear path to play their way to the very top and to go from rookie amateur to global icon. We'll see you on the road. ESLProTour.com, and that is, you know, quite the feat. I would have to say the esports has come a long way, but I really think that we need to hone in on one thing in specific here, Chad. The million dollars? Well, yeah, that's <laughs> something we could hone in on. I want to talk about the ESL Pro Tour ranking system. Yeah, and that's very important, right? Because with these events, this is the first time around that there's going to be any points that teams will be able to accumulate, they'll be able to put on the board in the race to get to those championship level events. The Katowice's and the Colognes, the gold standards for Counter-Strike right now. It's very important that, you know, now we have a reason for teams to attend certain tournaments, a reason for a narrative, right? We'd normally chop and change from tournament. We'd go from point A to point B. Look, an open circuit is really cool, but now that there's a story, now that there's a purpose for everything, it's got a bit more meat to the sandwich. Yeah, and everybody loves a little bit more meat on their sandwich. Isn't that right, Christine? Absolutely. A few vegetarians Vegetarians. Yeah, yeah or tofu, I guess. <laughs> tofu sandwich. Yeah, I, this ESL Pro Tour, you're Sorry. absolutely right, Chad. It does, it creates a lot more storylines, and it creates a goal for these teams throughout the entire year. Something to look forward to, that championship that means so much, and that money part, that, the, that definitely helps, too. The money always helps, but uh, <laughs> I guess in this situation, it would only be appropriate that I tell you about the Intel more money. Grand. And slam, more money out there. Uh, Liquid have won it. Astralis have won it. And now we're looking to do a third one right here. Potentially, I guess these two teams are the only ones with a mark on the board to get towards it. But uh, there's certainly a place for Astralis in this tournament thus far. Not a one-horse race. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but nice look. <laughs> nice. We obviously saw Liquid do it in very quick fashion. Before that, we saw Astralis do it. And these teams here have shown that something that not many people thought was possible can be done. Now, the rules for the Intel Grand Slam, they've changed a little bit. Um, now... We, 
look, I'm going to try and get this right. I don't want Carmack in my DMs <laughs> oh, today. Boy. So it used to be you would win four, right? You'd win four out of ten, and then you were going to be able to get the Intel Grand Slam. Now you have to win six out of ten unless you win one of these Master Championship events, the IEM Katowice or the ESL1 Cologne, and with one of them in your back pocket, you only need to win four. So win the biggest ones, and we, we make it a little bit easier for you. Yeah, that should make it a little bit easier, but we'll get into that. There's plenty of time. We're still pretty early in the Corsair DreamHack Masters Malma, which means it's early enough for me to tell you that coming up after the break, we're going to have our first best of three of the day. The Mouse Sports look on to take that of the Evil Geniuses. And well, let me remind you that this is an elimination match in which both of these teams will not be satisfied with going out this early. We'll be right back here at the Corsair DreamHack Masters. <laughs> 